Hi YouTubers and welcome back to V8 Creative. My name's Nigel and this week the build of the Ultima RS starts. Hi everyone, I'm part four of the Ultima RS build and this week the build begins. Now I'm going to talk through a few things I'm going to try and do, some experiments, some different type of camera angles to try and make this immersive. But firstly, if you look in the background, you'll see my RS condition box. Now I've taken inspiration from a film called War Games, I'll put a little insert there, where they had such a box that defined the defense condition of America in the risk of all out war. Now what I'm going to do is actually set the condition of how difficult and challenging the task is going to be for building the car in this episode. And in this episode, I've selected number two, one being the easiest, five being sweat, tears, stress, but two's pretty chilled. And what's the job for today's video? Well, we're going to make the passenger and driver safety cell. Now I must say, there's quite a lot of work involved and it's taken me a good couple of weeks to pull together all the footage for this 20 minute episode. So stick on in there because you've got a lot of fast moving stuff and I've been experimenting with spanner cam. Well, you're gonna have to wait to see what exactly that is. And also, for those avid watchers out there who are building cars and want a few extra tips, if you wait, up to the, wait to the end of the video, I'm gonna to pull together a handful of tips that I found incredibly useful doing this stage of the build. So, first thing to do is I'm going to show you what the Ultima RS build manual looks like. When you leave a deposit for an RS kit, the factory will give you access to the RS owner's resource portal. And on here, what you'll find are multiple sections which cover chassis, body, interior, exterior, electrical system, engine bay, powertrain, torques, capacities, and settings. And if you drop down into one of these, there are even more sub-menus. And what I plan to do on my build is cover each of these in turn. So for today's episode, we're going to focus on aluminium panels. And what you'll find here is a detailed description of exactly what to do, the tools you need, and apart from the written instruction, you will get lots of images of what you need to do in each step. And I must say, it is incredibly detailed. So there we go. So all that's left to do is crack out the spanners and let's build. Now, before I start the paneling, creating the passenger and driver safety cell. I've got some exciting news. Now, Ultima have just this very month launched a brand new factory upgrade and I am a very lucky boy because I'm the first one to actually have this upgrade. Now, what is it? It's a laser cut panel kit. So it's the same panels, but now they are laser cut. And what does it look like? Well, here, here is the front bulkhead. Now I'm trying to get that out of the light, but as you can probably see, all along here are beautifully laser cut holes for the rivets. Here we have the three holes, and these are for the master cylinders, perfectly lined up. And this little fella here, see my finger, this is for the steering column. And I know getting that in the right place is tricky. I remember that with my GTR. So also if you look at the edges of the aluminium panels, you can see how they've been profiled to just skim around the welds in the chassis, on the chassis members. So as you can imagine, this upgrade saves a huge amount of time. And I would say it probably cuts the whole process by half. Now, of course, you don't have to have this upgrade. You can do it the traditional way if you wish, but Having done it the traditional way, I've earned my badge, so I don't feel too guilty taking this option. Here we go, first stage of the build. We're applying nine aluminium panels to the chassis using pop rivets and sealant. 
Now, this is quite a lengthy process and I'm not going to put you through putting on every panel, otherwise we're gonna be here a long time. So what I'm gonna do is focused on one panel and do the rest hyperspeed. So we're gonna focus on the floor. And the first thing to do is flip the chassis. Now here's a big shout out for Kenton, my Tane mechanic. I call upon him for expert advice or for lifting when Rich the Lift, my other neighbor, is not around. And cue music. Do you like my spanner cam? Well, I want this to be immersive and I'm thinking of different ways of doing it. Well, this is the first stage of applying a panel. You saw me leveling up to make sure everything aligned correctly and then drilling just a series of well spread holes and inserting skin pins. And what this does is stop the panel from vibrating. Next, as you saw, I drilled and I drilled and I drilled and this panel the biggest one on the car has no less than 259 holes. So I've drilled all the holes, got lots of swarf now, which I will clear up. Then I'll remove this panel. And then what I need to do is deburr every single one of those 259 holes in the chassis. So hang on in there, fast pace again. A tip here, only do this if there's protective coating on the aluminium or chassis. Otherwise, you'll scratch it all up. Me again? Okay, so it's fine to brush the swarf off here because this surface won't be seen when the car is finished. So, let's get on with it. So now, what do we do next? Well, we drilled the 259 holes, we deburred the 259 holes, and next, we take this, wax seal. Now, B 
Because we've drilled into the chassis members, it's an ideal opportunity to actually put corrosion um, protection inside those members. Now, what we do is we select every fourth hole or so and do a little squirt, a little squirt. It's very therapeutic, this. I must say, sounds weird. Before I apply the sealant and the panel to the chassis, what I'm gonna do is use some brake cleaner. This is really good stuff. Um, and what you do is spray onto a cloth and you just go over all the mating surfaces because the wax you were spraying in those holes, you don't really want it contaminating that sealant. So, a quick spray and just run along every mating surface. And again, as I said, it doesn't matter if you get a few scratches, if anything, powder coat, if anything, it will form a better key. But I tell you, once this is on, this ain't moving. Okay, back over to the assembly zone. I've taken the alloy panel off. Now, the very fact I've been drilling through this aluminium, which is quite a soft material, into hard steel, what's happened to the back of the holes, on some of them, there is a very slight burr. Now, what I'm gonna do is use my deburring tool, which I must say has earned it weight in gold so far, and just go along in these holes and just skim off anything that might for any reason, lift that aluminium off the steel when it's riveted. So, I'm not gonna put you through watching me do this, but just think of me, 259 holes, here I go. And now this is really like I'm wrapping a present. Tip, don't bite your fingernails. Right, next job, putting worth sealant on all these chassis members before the aluminium is sealed onto it and then pop riveted. Now, this is messy, or it can be, so I'm gonna get some gloves. And I would say, if you're good at piping cakes, you'll be really good at this. And one other thing, I do apologize if you can hear little claws on the garage floor. Um, that's Rufus, my creative director. You may see him in the background. Okay. And when you're applying this, you just want a small bead that's a few millimeters wide. And what you've got to envisage is that you don't want this oozing out anywhere you can see. This is the moment of truth. Skin pins. So as you can see, the process is, we just put a handful of skin pins down first to make sure the actual panel aligns perfectly. Then we put several pot rivets around the circumference of the panel, again, making sure everything aligns. And then I'm just placing in the rivets here on each run, and then we'll go along with a, well, with my golden riveting gun.
gun, a thousand plus rivets. <sighs> I must say the first stage of an Ultima RS build as an Ultima GTR is quite a lot of work. There's a lot of rivets and that footage you've seen, I've compressed basically two weeks of work into about 15 minutes. However, next week, the spannering starts. Now that is going to be the pedal assembly. And this is, as we say, an analog car. It's got a third pedal, it's got a clutch. None of this flappy paddle stuff. So, as many of you have already, and a big shout out to you, please subscribe, please follow, please thumbs up, notifications, all that stuff, because this channel is getting great traction. And what is it about? just sharing the passion of building these cars. So what I'm going to end on is my usual words of wisdom from my hero. Creativity is intelligence having fun. Until next time, happy spannering.